few structures of the human anatomy are as unique as the hand. The hand needs to be mobile in order to position the fingers and thumb. The hand must have adequate strength to grip objects firmly, but must also be coordinated to perform fine motor tasks with precision. The important structures of the hand can be divided into several categories. These include bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. Let's define some common anatomic terms as they relate to the hand. This will make it clearer as we talk about the structures of the hand later. The front or palm side of the hand is referred to as the palmer side. The back of the hand is called the dorsal side. The half of the hand from the middle finger to the thumb is called the radial side. The other half is called the ulnar side. There are 27 bones within the wrist and hand. The wrist itself contains eight small bones called carpals. The carpals join with the two forearm bones, the radius and ulna, forming the wrist joint. Further into the palm, the carpals connect to the metacarpals. There are five metacarpals forming the palm of the hand. One metacarpal connects to each finger and thumb. Small bone shafts called phalanges line up to form each finger and thumb. The main knuckle joints are formed by the connections of the phalanges to the metacarpals. These joints are called the metacarpophalangeal joints, or MCP joints. The MCP joints work like a hinge when you bend and straighten your fingers and thumb. The three phalanges in each finger are separated by two joints, called interphalangeal joints or IP joints. The one closest to the MCP joint is called the proximal IP joint or the PIP joint. The joint near the end of the finger is called the distal IP joint or DIP joint. The thumb only has one IP joint between the two thumb phalanges. The IP joints of the digits also work like hinges when you bend and straighten your fingers and thumb. The joints of the hand, fingers, and thumb are covered on the ends with articular cartilage. This white shiny material has a rubbery consistency. The function of articular cartilage is to absorb shock and provide an extremely smooth surface to facilitate motion. There is articular cartilage essentially everywhere that two bony surfaces move against one another or articulate. Ligaments are tough bands of tissue that connect bones together. Two important structures called collateral ligaments are found on either side of each finger and thumb joint. The function of the collateral ligaments is to prevent abnormal sideways bending of each joint. In the PIP joint, the middle joint between the main knuckle and the DIP joint, the strongest ligament is the volar plate. This ligament connects the proximal phalanx to the middle phalanx on the palmer side of the joint. The ligament tightens as the joint is straightened and keeps the PIP joint from bending back too far or hyperextending. Finger deformities can occur when the volar plate loosens from disease or injury. Many of the muscles that control the hand start at the elbow or forearm. They run down the forearm and cross the wrist and hand. Some control only the bending or straightening of the wrist. Others influence motion of the fingers or thumb. Many of these muscles help position and hold the wrist and hand while the thumb and fingers grip or perform fine motor actions. Most of the small muscles that work the thumb and little finger start on the carpal bones. The bulge of muscle at the base of the thumb in the palm is called the thenar eminence. The bulge of muscle at the base of the little finger is called the hypothenar eminence. Four muscles make up the thenar eminence. The abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, adductor pollicis, and opponens pollicis. Pollicis is the Latin term for thumb. Each of these muscles begins at the wrist and each has a tendon that attaches to a different location on the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Their names give a suggestion of what they do when they contract. The abductor pollicis brevis abducts 
or moves the thumb away from the midline of the hand. The flexor pollicis brevis flexes or bends the thumb. The adductor pollicis adducts or moves the thumb towards the midline of the hand. The opponent's pollicis moves the thumb into opposition. It pulls the thumb out from the palm and turns the pulp of the thumb to face the palm. This is the motion that allows you to place the tip of your thumb against the tip of your little finger. The muscles of the hypothenar eminence are arranged and function roughly the same in the little finger. The smallest muscles that originate in the wrist and hand are called the intrinsic muscles. The intrinsic muscles guide the fine motions of the fingers by getting the fingers positioned and holding them steady during hand activities. The tendons that allow each finger joint to straighten are called the extensor tendons. The extensor tendons of the fingers begin as muscles that arise from the back side of the forearm bones. These muscles travel towards the hand where they eventually connect to the extensor tendons before crossing over the back of the wrist joint. As they travel into the fingers, the extensor tendons become the extensor hood. The extensor hood flattens out to cover the top of the finger and sends out branches on each side that connect to the bones in the middle and end of the finger. The place where the extensor tendon attaches to the middle phalanx is called the central slip. When the extensor muscles contract, they tug on the extensor tendon and straighten the finger. Problems occur when the central slip is damaged, as can happen with a tear. The flexor tendons allow the fingers and thumb to flex or bend to grip objects in the palm of the hand. The strong flexor muscles begin in the forearm, and just before they enter the wrist, the flexor muscles form the flexor tendons. The flexor tendons travel through the carpal tunnel, through the palm, and two tendons each travel into the volar side of each finger. These two tendons, the flexor superficialis and flexor profundus, travel through a special tunnel formed by a series of specialized ligaments that form pulleys. The flexor superficialis connects to the base of the middle phalanx. The flexor profundus tendon connects to the base of the distal phalanx. The thumb is a bit different since it only has two phalanges. The flexor pollicis longus begins in the forearm and its tendon connects to the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb. The flexor pollicis brevis muscle begins in the wrist and its tendon connects to the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. All of the nerves that travel to the hand and fingers begin together at the shoulder. The radial nerve, the median nerve, and the ulnar nerve. These nerves carry signals from the brain to the muscles that move the arm, hand, fingers, and thumb. The nerves also carry signals back to the brain about sensations such as touch, pain, and temperature. The radial nerve runs along the thumb side edge of the forearm. It wraps around the end of the radius bone toward the back of the hand. It gives sensation to the back of the hand from the thumb to the third finger. It also supplies the back of the thumb and just beyond the main knuckle of the back surface of the ring and middle fingers. The median nerve travels through a tunnel within the wrist called the carpal tunnel. This nerve gives sensation to the thumb, index finger, long finger, and half of the ring finger. It also sends a nerve branch to control the thenar muscles of the thumb. The thenar muscles help move the thumb and let you touch the pad of your thumb to the tips of each finger on the same hand, a motion called opposition. The ulnar nerve travels through a separate tunnel called Guillaume's canal. This tunnel is formed by two carpal bones, the pisiform and hamate, and the ligament that connects them. After passing through the canal, the ulnar nerve branches out to supply feeling to the little finger and half the ring finger. Branches of this nerve also supply the small muscles in the palm and the muscle that pulls the thumb toward the palm. Each finger has a pair of sensory nerves, one on each side, that runs to the tip of the finger. These nerves are called the digital nerves and supply sensation to the fingers. Traveling along with the nerves are the large vessels that supply the hand with blood. 
The largest artery is the radial artery that travels across the front of the wrist closest to the thumb. The radial artery is where the pulse is taken in the wrist. The ulnar artery runs next to the ulnar nerve through Guillaume's canal, which has been mentioned earlier. The ulnar and radial arteries arch together within the palm of the hand, supplying the front of the hand, fingers, and thumb. Other arteries travel across the back of the wrist to supply the back of the hand, fingers, and thumb. When our hands are free of problems, it's easy to take the complex anatomy of the hand for granted. The hand is formed by numerous structures. Each has an important role in the normal hand function. Injuries and conditions that change the way these structures work can greatly impact whether the hand functions normally.